Brooks Farm Dairy. My grandpa started the farm in like 1933. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with Rudy's down in Clarkson, but him and his uh, his dad was in partnership selling cars out of there, and they were selling Buick cars and uh, also Fords. And you can get a whole Model T for 420 bucks, and you could fill the gas tank up for a nickel. And his job was to hook to fill up the the gas tanks, uh, and a lot of people would just pull up there and get a penny. So they get a penny's worth of gas. And so he could say, well, man, I'm never going to make any money doing this. So I, uh, I, I got to go. They're getting like 2.30 a bushel or something up at the farm, you know, for farming. He says, I think I'm going to try putting in some corn and stuff. So he got, a, he left the opportunity to be a car dealer and uh, moved up uh, here to Ortonville on, on the farm in 1933. And uh, it, yeah, yeah, he got it for a pretty, pretty good price for almost nothing, and there was nothing here. It all needed to be, you know, the land needed to be cleared, and there was chickens running around. There was really no road. It was just a two-track thing with horse and buggy, like, going down through there. And so that's where they decided to come up and start farming, and, and the, kind of the, here we are, you know, 86 years later, and uh, they're getting 450, or getting, uh, Forty-five thousand dollars for a car now, and uh, corn is still two thirty a bushel. <laughs> how important was the small American farm in the nineteen thirty? There was a lot of them. There was a lot of farms around, and that's how you made your livelihood. You had to take care of your family, and you know, and everybody had a couple cows and a couple uh, chickens and a couple pigs, and that's what you ate. You fed them, you ate them. <clears throat> you got a little bit bigger, you could put, you know, start having more cows and try to hopefully sell it. Put the milk in cans and. Uh, haul it, haul it all the way to the town, and, and take it to a cream range and stuff. So. In those days, what was a profitable family farm? Um, Money-wise, you yeah. mean? I have. Uh, we got my grandparents had some records, and it, I mean, if they if they made a thousand or two thousand dollars a year, you'd be lucky. So it wasn't a get-rich no proposition. No, still's not. Right. <laughs> so Dad took it far. How far? Wait, so then uh, my grandpa uh, started. Uh, what happened is that. Uh, um, they, they started farming, get bigger, and bought more land, and got more cows. And then in 1958, the, the barn I uh, used to run east and west with Seymour Lake Road burnt down. And so uh, they had to build a new barn, which is the one that you see now. And uh, they, uh, my dad happened to be lived down the road a mile on a farm and was working for a contractor. And the contractor got the job, and, uh, and he started... His job was to build a barn. He, he moved down here, and my grandpa had two daughters, and he ended up marrying one of the daughters and never left the farm. So he pretty much the, everything that you see built on this side of the road was was uh, built by my dad. When did you end up getting involved in the farm? Um, I, I ended up, well, I started, uh, when I was five or six, I started working. When I was like eight and a half, I started milking the, the cows uh, by myself, he, my dad had to go to a meeting or something, and I ended up started one night, and then after that I did a lot of it. So uh, I've been milking in the barn that it's a here that he built for 50 years myself. So, it's a long time. so yeah, yeah. So when did this become a career for you? Well, when I started, I went to Michigan State in 19, uh, got out of high school in 1979 and 80, 81, and went to a dairy short course program in Michigan State. And uh, while I was there, you were supposed to take your, your family farm and try to make as much money as you can on paper. So there was guys putting down, you know, going to change the crop. You're going to go from hay to corn and to wheat and try to get two or three things in the year. And I decided uh, uh, to take the, the milk from the cows and have the processing plant and sell it right off the farm. And so uh, I, I had did that. I was pretty much failing the class. And uh, I ended up getting like a 94 on the project. So it, it was pretty cool. And so I, I, when I come home in, 80, in 81, we started building that uh, idea. And that idea has really spawned into what is really a family farm. Right. Well, well we yeah, it's come into a pretty good business. And we get a lot of people come buy milk and ice cream now. 
We'll have up to a thousand people a day come to get ice cream. Would Cooks be different if you didn't go to college? Oh, I, I, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. We probably, I don't know if we would have had the, the idea to, to make it profitable or not. But if we, if we didn't have the, the input from the community and buying the milk and the ice cream, the farm probably wouldn't be here. There's really, uh, you have to have a five, six hundred or thousand cows to make, make a lot of enough money to feed a family. Now. So well, as you're just making this transition, obviously corporate farming is coming into, into light. Right. So you have to find that niche. Right. Talk a little bit about the modern day cooks. Well, we, we uh, started off making milk, and then that was good, and we used to put it in a little pouch, and uh, that's the way they did it in Canada. And one thing that was unique about the pouch is that we could make our own container and sell it, but then the, the customers didn't like it, and a couple times they'd start leaking and this and that, and so we end up getting rid of the pouch and putting it in the, after about 15 years and putting it in a jug and that really uh, made our milk sales uh, a lot better. And then uh, first couple of years we were selling milk and then we had some milk left over so we said well we'll start making ice cream. First we said well we'll make some butter milk, we'll make some chocolate milk and then finally we said well let's make some ice cream. And so then after we started making ice cream that's what really took off and that's what everybody it seems to come and enjoy and, and walk around and see the cows. And, uh, so ice cream is a bigger product than milk. Yeah, we, we make we make a lot more money on the ice cream, and the customers like it a lot more in the milk. Cook's Farm Dairy has become a destination spot. Yeah, we try to have it a family spot, and a lot of the stuff that we do here, we do for the for the customers and not for ourselves, and and or for the cows. You know, our new facility here is uh, going to be, uh, you know, eye appealing and. People are going to like to, to come and see the cows, and it's going to be more cow comfort. And uh, we're putting in a new robot, and the robot's what's going to be kind of unique, you know. After I never, I never thought I'd see a uh, uh, cow being milked by a robot, but they, you know, they've been doing it for about 15, 18 years, and so now um, they're getting the bugs worked out of it. We're going to get a good use one. So. Ex explain what a robot would be. Well, a robot pretty much is. Uh, uh, the cow comes in, they have a collar on their neck, and the, and it, uh, the collar indicates who the cow is and how much milk she gave before. And, and so then it, there's a machine that tells it how much to feed it. And so when it gets fed the right of every time she goes in there, she'll get fed the right amount of feed. They'll keep track how many pounds of milk she gets, what her temperature is, what her weight is, what all about the milk, and how long it took her to milk each quarter. There's about 30 different things that you can tell on the robot, and there'll be a lot more information than we've ever had before on the cows. Are you surprised that when folks come here, literally kids have never seen a cow close? Yeah, we give a lot does that, of. Does that surprise you at all? We give a lot of farm tours, you know, and people think you only go to the grocery store, and that's where you get your milk from, and that's where it comes from. And so it, it, uh, they, a lot of them, a lot of people don't maybe not like the smell and stuff, but that, that's part of the farm and that's where the milk comes from. And, and uh, we try to keep our farm a lot cleaner and our animals are a lot uh, are more friendlier because they, they do see a lot more people. And the calves like to suck on people's fingers and stuff more because they do get to see more people. But uh, we try to make it... Uh, do things like hay rides and pumpkin rides and tours. We have a lot of tours for, for inner, we have a lot of people from the inner city come up for tours and uh, the, this first time they have ever seen a cow before. You are a second generation, now about to start with a third generation? Yeah, we're third going on fourth. fourth. Okay. So yeah. your son is uh, kind of taking Yeah, the Quentin's role. got, my son Quentin's got out of college and he's decided to come back and his idea was to put the robot on in the robot barn to make things more, uh, um, technology and you can we can run everything off our cell phone we can run the computer will be run off the cell phone we got cameras it'll be on your cell phone and so we he can anywhere in the world we can see what's going on it cooks so old school is, is kind of becoming new school if you will. yeah right yeah, all, the, all the new high-tech stuff is getting brought into the farm and stuff. what makes you the happiest there? oh just seeing the people come buy our product yeah and why should I come here well, because well, we don't you put any hormones in our milk. You know, we try to do as most natural we can. Is, is, is uh, um, you know, feeding the cows and taking care of cows and the quality of them, and, and we call it like for moo to you. And so we uh, uh, just try to keep it as most natural as we can.